Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us for this very exciting announcement and the official dedication of the Pamela Roland DeVos School of Fashion at Kendall College of Art and Design. My name is Elena Teslerix. I'm the Chief Communications Officer at KCAD, and I will be your host for the next hour or so. It's my great pleasure to introduce you to four people who are very important to KCAD and the Fashion Studies program. On stage, we have Dave Eisler, President of Ferris State University, David Rosen, President of Kendall College of Art and Design, Pamela Roland DeVos, President and Designer of Fashion House Pamela Rowland, and David Rodriguez, Vice President of Design and Brand Development at Pamela Rowland. Welcome to Kendall. It's kind of like Pamela and the Three Davids is what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> we'll sing later. I like the David sandwich. Like <laughs> the David sandwich. <laughs> yeah, <that's right. laughs> so we have about half an hour to talk with our panelists and discuss some key points. Then we'll open the floor for questions from the audience. We'll wrap up around 4.45 to allow the press time to connect with the panel for individual interviews while the rest of us head to the third floor for the official dedication ceremony at 5.15 and the celebration after that. There's a beautiful display of student work in the corridor. The fashion studies classrooms will be open and we encourage you to talk with our fashion studies students who are here with us today. They can be identified by their orange name tags. So, if everybody's good, we've done the sound check. So we'll yep. just dive in. I have some Q&A prepared for you guys. And the first question is for Ms. DeVos. Why did you and Dan make this gift? What were you seeing that caused you to say, let's get behind this program and make it work? Well, first of all, our family loves Grand Rapids. And it's a place we were both born and raised. He's my high school sweetheart. And one of the reasons that I just decided that I think it would be great to open I saw Kendall growing this, it started out small, but this fashion school, and somebody told me about it, and I said, you know what, that is so fantastic, because when I was growing up, I, it's something I wanted to do. And, you know, back then in the 70s, you didn't venture away from home like you do today, but we wanted to keep all our talent here, and so I just said, you know what, when someone approached me, I said I'd be happy to do it, and I was thrilled to be asked. President Eisler, the next question is for you. Why is this generous gift important to KCAD and Ferris State University? Well, as we were preparing it, I was thinking about the first time we visited, and it was over lunch, and Sam Cummings was nice enough to put, to put us together. And we shared a little bit about what we were trying to accomplish with, with fashion and with Kendall. And we're fortunate in Grand Rapids that, that the people who've had great success in this community have invested in our community, and your gift today is another great example of that. And we are very, very grateful at Ferris State University and at Kendall College of Art and Design. And we talked about how you, how you entered the fashion industry and your company and our desire to create students who would graduate with the talents. And it seemed like there were really common areas of focus. And so as we talked and we considered, you know, it was just wonderful that you were willing to support us in this way. And this is a great day. It's a great day for Grand Rapids. It's a great day for Kendall College of Art and Design. It's a great day for Ferris State University, and I'm hoping it's a great day for the fashion. It's a fantastic fashion. day for Pamela Rowland, too. Yeah. <laughs> hey. President Rosen, how does the Fashion Studies program fit the mission of KCAB? Well, I think it was, it's great that what you said about having to go away if you wanted to do fashion, and it's important to be able to grow our talent here. I think it would be great if we could keep our talent here, Absolutely. though I know that uh, places like New York and Los Angeles and London call, but it would be really nice to be able to do that. So this is a design-centered part of the state. We have the highest per capita number of industrial designers. We have one of the highest per capita numbers of graphic designers. Design is part of the rich tradition of this place. And it seemed to me that one of the things that we have the capacity to do is grow fashion here and grow a fashion program that can help uh, power that. We want to have impact. We don't want to just ha create knowledge and we don't want to just create skill. We want to use that knowledge and skill to have impact 
on the region and on the various professions. And I just think it's, it's marvelous that you willingly partner with us and lent us your name as an inspiration, but also as, as a way for us to say we're here in Grand Rapids and we're significant and we're going to do things that will make you sit up and take notice. So thank you. Thank you. Pamela, why do you think it's important to have a fashion school in Grand Rapids? And David Rosen, what advantages do you see? Well, I think just like what I was saying is I think it's great to keep our talent here. Um, and really, honestly, going to New York City from here, it, it's, it's a very different world. It's kind of like when um, Dorothy said, Toto, I don't think... I don't think we're in Kansas anymore. <laughs> so I personally wouldn't want my young 18-year-old going there. I love that they can the, <clears throat> this study, this uh, what they can do here is that actually have their um, first two years here, is it two, three years three here, years, three and years, then, and then they can go to New York to FIT. So they can grow up a little bit. I love that aspect of this program. And someday we'll, they will grow it even more. And I hope that having them here for the first three years, they'll come back here too. Yeah, right. And we're going to try to grow uh, the ecosystem here to make it friendly for them. Again, there's so many assets that can support fashion here, not just design, but we have this great history of manufacturing textile that goes along with the furniture, both the residential and the uh, office furniture tradition. And so there is textile happening here. And again, so much is going global in terms of where industries are locating. Again, the top 20 uh, fashion centers aren't all in Europe and in the United States anymore. Uh, Chicago, I think, fell to number 20 on the list this year, and we have three uh, Asian uh, capitals that now are in the top 10. So I think that we can play a role from here. I think that you can, you can actually grow industries and make a contribution wherever you are, especially if you have the kind of assets we have here. Yeah, David, you touched on a few things here, but Pamela, I'm curious. Is there a niche in the industry that you see that Grand Rapids could fill? Oh, absolutely. We have the talent here. Um, I think, and I've always, David hears me always, all the time say, I like those Midwest kids. <laughs> <laughs> we, have our work, we have the work ethic here. Oh, I love yeah. it. Oh, yeah, um, so I definitely think there is one. Well, Pamela, you brought a special guest with you from New York, model Valeria, who... Any we moment? have so many things we could have shown you today, but we had to think of something that they, the students, we brought a, th a few things in. This is very fashion forward. Uh, David, Ooh. you can kind of describe what we're seeing here. So this is from our most recent fall collection. This is the look that actually opened the show. And when Pamela approaches every runway show, she decides what is going to really set the tone for the show. And that's why the first look is always the most important. And you want to impress the press, too. You know, it can't be just a little... Uh, <laughs> black sheath dress. It's right. got to be something. Now, I love this. I couldn't wear it, but I certainly can you know, see a lot of young girls wear it. But, but I think that's what's so great, because you always say we dress the mothers and the daughters. And, and grandmothers. True. And grandmothers, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so there's always, in every Pamela Rowland collection, there's something for everyone. Yep. But this is stretch leather peplum jacket with a Lurex brocade center front panel and then a shearling collar. So, you know, it's just an we, everyday look. <laughs> just cause. I love that line. Just cause. Just cause. <laughs> it in Grand Rapids all the time. Yeah. Uh, it's like, it's uh, you know, we had to choose one for here. We have, we'll have her in different things. We brought about, what, eight looks in or something yeah. like that. There's but a lot more to see We just later. wanted something wow for you guys, so. Yay. And it's young and fun. Yay. <laughs> I love the lines. It's really beautiful. Okay. I love the lines. Textures and the colors is beautiful. Pamela, can you tell us a bit about how your relationships in the fashion world are important to the West Michigan region? Well, I think one of the things that I I was um, I'm part of the CFDA, um, and which is very important. That's I don't know how to explain. <laughs> wow, it's sort of like our um, our. Elks Lodge. <laughs> 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 
but it's, it's just a little more glamorous. <laughs> it's not easy. No, I mean, in. it's kind of interesting. <laughs> students here, you're in, you're in um, your meetings. I was sitting, let's see, in front was um, oh, Michael gosh. Kors. Yeah. We were at Vera Wang's house. Diana behind, Vreeland. Yeah, and behind me. I meant Diana Van Furstenberg. Oh, yeah. 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 And then behind <laughs> me is Tori Birch, who's a, you know, is doing amazing. So you're surrounded by, it's, it's, it's really pretty cool. You're, you're kind of starstruck. But it, it's great to be a part of that um, team with all the other designers, and, and I'm sorry I'm getting off what you asked. <laughs> that is great. <laughs> but that's what I, I think it's very important to be part of that. And I was very thrilled. It's not easy to get into. You just can't. You have to be asked, and I tried for a long time. So I finally, in 2010, had the honor of being part of this group. So, Yeah. So this question is for Dave and David. We understand that KCAD and Ferris have a relationship with FIT, the Fashion Institute of Technology in New York City. What is that relationship and how was Pamela instrumental in making that connection? I'm willing to start and if you'll, you'll finish, with I'll, it, I'll you'll, finish, you'll fill in the pieces I don't do. But when, when Kendall was putting together this program, we, we thought it was very, very important that the students begin here in Grand Rapids with the, the background of Kendall, but we also wanted to have a connection with New York and with designers in New York. So the idea was after three years of study that you would go to the Fashion Institute of Technology. And you know, as, as we talked with, with Pamela, all the connections that she's developed in her, her career in New York, being able to build that relationship, and you also had a relationship with FIT, so that... That was, that's the part that I know, David. You can take it from there. Well, I can actually, I can go back a step, uh, and I have to say uh, that originally we thought about having a relationship with Parsons. Yeah. Did you know that? You did, because you helped, and that actually began, that fell apart, and they weren't very friendly. And then, uh, <laughs> they're John, not very friendly, though. Uh, John went there. Where is, is he's he in the back. Oh. He's shamed. He's sitting <laughs> way back there. You can sit outside, my friend. Uh, but um, the... That uh, then you helped make the relationship, the connection with FIT, and they were more than willing to to be part of it. And we submitted our plan to our uh, art accreditors uh, as a three plus one, three here and one in in uh, New York at FIT. But I want to say one thing about it: while we try to make all our students have work that will be FIT worthy, we also know that. It, you can't just walk straight in. You have to have a portfolio that mm -hmm. measures up because quality control is so important there. Well, and, and the competition. And the competition huge. is key. Huge. And um, <clears throat> so, so what we've been trying to do is develop that, but also we provide a fourth-year alternative here uh, for those who would like to stay here and don't want to attempt the big city and those who may not be ready to go. But thank you very much for making that relationship. I think it's going to get stronger. In fact, uh, I think uh, before Christmas that the provost from FIT will be out here and we're going to figure out other ways right. we can collaborate. Right. So, it's wonderful. Yeah. Thank you. This question is for you, David. What do you think is the most critical part of a fashion designer's education? That's a really good question. I think, I mean, obviously the foundation is what you build on as a designer, but one of the things that you have that we don't get in fashion school is the business side of running a business, you know? It's not just making that dress, you have to actually produce it, sell it, finance it, uh, understand who the buyers are, so. A lot of designers forget that. The young kids think, <laughs> I'm gonna go out and become Michael Kors, a millionaire, and, and they don't understand. You have to watch your dollars and, yeah. It's we've, we've had a lot of ups and downs. We, we learned our <laughs> lesson. Thank I'm sorry, you. go ahead. Oh, no. That's, 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 you're absolutely right. <laughs> the next question is for the both of you. Um, where is the fashion industry going, and where would you like to see the graduates of the KCAD fashion program take it? Unfortunately, lately it's going all over. I mean, it's strong in China. I'd like to see Kendall get really strong and keep it here, but also especially to help, you know, <laughs> the American designers. Um, we, I wish we had more backing. One is by, the, um, by Hollywood. Mm -hmm. You know, they could back us. I always say that too when I, during Oscars and that when I'm interviewed, I said, well, I think the actresses should make sure they wear American but quite often they don't. <laughs> that was good. 
We also have something we're extremely proud of and we always talk about and, and many people in the process, we, we produce 100% in New York City. So we produce 100% in America. That's great. So most don't. It does make it more expensive, but the, <laughs> yeah. the quality is better here than anywhere. David Rose, at David, what can you tell us about the atelier mentioned in the press release? Oh my gosh. Well, uh, I have some friends who do things sort of in the fashion world a little bit, as much as you can from Grand Rapids. And so what we did was, uh, and one of them's back there, Ben Gott, who has a small little line, Benjamin Edgar, is trying to do a second season and trying to produce it here. So he had a pretty good idea about what's missing. And so the idea was to find a way to set up a, a space where you could take designs to patterns and samples and then do small runs, size runs on demand. And so we just bought the contents of a, a small apparel factory in, um, in Detroit. And we brought it here and we've inventoried it and we've seen where the missing pieces are. Now, we know pretty much what we need to have as assets here to begin something that looks like a startup of an industry. And, what we're, and so if you have anywhere in your Rolodex or in your pockets, stitchers, tailors, pattern makers, or samplers, those Send are the people. Send them our way. <laughs> no. <laughs> Don't listen to them. <laughs> but uh, we're, going to try, we're going to begin a program of training youth as well as adults to fill those roles and finding people who are already in the community to fill those roles. And I think yesterday I may have found someone who was our pattern slash sample maker who could help run the Italian. So That's great. one missing piece may be in place. Yeah. President Eisler, can you tell us what makes the KCAB program competitive with those in New York or LA and what makes it unique? Well, I think I'm, I'm not gonna suggest that I'm qualified to answer your question the way you posed it. <laughs> but the piece that we've done at Kendall is we've always tried to build a, a program that was based on quality. And the, the quality of our program comes from small class sizes with close interaction with faculty, with faculty who have professional experience. And so you're learning from someone who's, who's done this in the real world. So I think there's always been this, you know, Kendall's slogan for many years was working artists. And I think that's a part of what we bring to this is a practicality and an understanding of what, what it takes to succeed in this very competitive business. Yeah. Uh, David, can you tell us what sort of industry and this, this David, <laughs> David Rowe. <Rosen. laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, what sort of industry involvement KCAD fashion studies students have had so far? Was there... Well, we, I mean, Obviously, um, we've had some students who've been working for various shops around town and small, small houses, and we've had one student who has so far won a competition, had her, her zigzag dress uh, produced. Athena, if she, is she in here somewhere? No, she's absent. She's probably Oh, she's right there. Right there. Right there. Right there. And uh, I think you're shortlisted in another competition, but you're going to win it, right? Of course. Okay, of course you Great. will. So, uh, yeah, so w it's, it's very nice. And we actually had uh, a couple of our students work on sampling for, for Ben. Um, and they did a pretty good job. Yeah. But that's what we want to do as part of the atelier is really we want to make them familiar with things like material. I think it's really important to understand material. Fabulous. As you were talking about quality, I think the way things are constructed and especially stitch is really important. And we want to make sure that when they go through the program, they understand those things and how important they are, that it's not just about putting a, a pencil or paper or, or shipping a pattern somewhere and having it sewn by someone else, that they really have to be responsible for the, the whole making of it, the whole design from inside out. Well, so. one thing students will say, they might be great at sketching, but you look at it and say, okay, well, how is someone going to wear this? Exactly. It might look great on paper, but it doesn't look great on a, on a model. And we have that happen all the time to us. I get excited about, we have John, who's a great sketcher, who's here with us, and, we'll, and you always will say, well, how are they going to wear that? <laughs> what kind of fabric do you think about? So there's a lot more than just sketching. You're right. They have to know. Oh, that's why it's so great. I couldn't do this business without the knowledge of the students I have. 
that I, I hired. I have to say, the model out there looked like a fashion illustration. The lines were fabulous. We I like mean, that. I really thought yeah. that was really stunning. Yeah, yeah. yeah well yeah. done. Well, I just have one more question, and Pamela, this one's for you. Would you consider moving Pamela Rowland headquarters to Grand Rapids? I would love to. Absolutely. Yay. This is my hometown. But, there's a big but, I, I need to have the pattern makers, the sewers, I need to have the people here. We're going to get them for you. Okay, that's you get what, them that's here. That's what we're doing. We're going get them to get here, them here. I will move here. All right, you heard and it And my here. husband would be thrilled. <laughs> Um, no, I, I'd love to have it here and make it, I, mean, I, you know, I'm traveling all the time and I have a family and I would love to stay here. But, you know, again, right now, this is where if you really want to be a fashion designer, you, you know, here. this is, unfortunately, you can't, it, you, we got to get all these things here to keep everyone here so we can get, it'd be wonderful to have, you know, not only Pamela Rowland from New York City, but Pamela Rowland from Grand Rapids, Michigan. It'd be fantastic. Wow, I love it. I'm seeing the design for the label. <laughs> um, Elena, if, if I could, I just want to publicly say thank you for your support. What philanthropists do is they help people achieve dreams. And when we were working on this building, one of our dreams was that we'd be able to finish this building. And with your support, we actually changed the plans and created the, the center that we have for fashion in this building. And you know, we had. We had a dream of a program and you were willing to take and attach your name to our program and help us try to dream what this program can be. So th well, thank you so very you're much. You're very welcome. I, I'm just thrilled that you guys took this building over because there's a history that I have since I was 25 years old being involved with the art museum. And I love this building. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I think it's fantastic that you're in here and I love that the school's in here. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you all very much. So if you don't mind, we can open up the floor for questions from the media, guests, students, anyone who wants to raise a hand. Wow. Thank you. <laughs> To make the school worth the while? You know what? One thing I always say to any fashion student is it's not an easy business. It's extremely competitive. And if you love what you do, you're going to work hard, long hours. I mean, there, especially during fashion, I don't think we ever sleep before a show. So I would say if you love it, stick with it. But if you are kind of not sure about it, don't stick, stick around because it is not a business for someone that is not 100% in. I would say 110% in. Yeah. Do you have anything to add to that? Yeah. Well, and I think what's so great about the industry is that it's so broad in, not, in terms of opportunities. So you don't have to just be a dress designer. You could be a button designer, a fabric designer, a print designer. So there's a lot and of bags. different... Handbags. Handbags. Mean, shoes. We... Mm -hmm. You love shoes. I love shoes. <laughs> Great <laughs> heels. Yeah. I wish we made them, but that's a whole other story. That's, an, that's another chapter. <laughs> Thank you. Next question. I think it's really important. I actually have a business degree, and I think it just sometimes that somebody just focuses on fashion, if they're going to try to open a business, it doesn't work. You have to also know how that you have to sell so many to keep the doors open, and you have to watch your, your spending. And I have to say I was very guilty of not doing that very well in the beginning. <laughs> Just ask my husband. <laughs> you agree with that? I, I, absolutely. Because yeah. he ran, yeah. you had your own business too. I had my you own know business it. for a while. Yeah. Yeah. And that's something that you forget is that you know it's it's an artistic expression, but at the end of the day, it's a product, and that product has to sell. So it may have a longer shelf life than a carton of milk, but at the same time, someone still needs to have that desire to buy what you just made, and that's how we have to figure out. It's not just sketching 
like what you said, and making the dress, it's, there's more beyond that. I would add that from our first conversation, the part that resonated with me was how concerned you were about the business piece of this. And yeah. I think that was most of what we talked about that day was how important it was for students to understand the business piece of this, not just the design piece. Well, it looks very flattering. Everyone's like, I want to be a fashion designer. I want to be so big because it's so, you know, media now, it's all about that, you know, and it's gone crazy even since I started. Um, you know, you can't pick up something without, you know, the bloggers and all the things that are going on. Wow. It looks so exciting, but it's a lot of work. But it is exciting, too. Yeah, it's fun. <laughs> it's really fun. Yeah. We, we only do it because it's a lot of work. There's no fun. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Are there any other questions? Yes. You know what, everyone asks that and it's so funny because after we'll have a show, we'll go, oh my gosh. I mean, I was looking at fabric, why we're styling a show. <laughs> and we go, really, David, you're gonna show me? My, I have to, so I gotta put my brain wrapped around. We actually are always ahead of the game. Like we are always, and so what's interesting is we already know what we're gonna do for resort, which is in June, the inspiration anyway. So as you're just living every day, I would say that you see something new. You do feel sometimes exhausted after a show, thinking, I really have to do this again. But then it becomes <laughs> it's something like we that. love, yeah. and it becomes, I don't, it's not easy, but I mean, it becomes just, I don't know, evolves. Yeah, and I mean, we're working at any one time, at least on three collections at one time. Yeah. In different stages of each development of that collection. So um, you never, I mean, you're so good at making a decision. I show her something, she's like, yes, no, yes, no. <laughs> and moving on. <laughs> so, you know, there's no waffling. Well, and inspirations too, we travel quite a bit and I, and, and I love art and so that's what usually the inspirations are. So um, every vacation or business trip or whatever we go on is always inspiration. It's like, where's Pamela? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's the next Like, that's where's the next Waldo, collection. yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you, is there anyone else? Well, do I have to be, I might be honest. Well, I think right now what's happened is I really would like some of these big design houses just keep taking over the little ones. And that does kind of hurt us when, you know, everyone is, and I don't know how we're going to change that. I think that's what business is all about now, the bigger design houses and, you know, they can support the designers. And sometimes people back up the bigger names, all, you know, and so we are constantly fighting that. Um, there's a lot of overseas things going on, and we did look into China, not for manufacturing, but just business, because it's going on there, but a question my family kind of asked, do you want to spend all your time there? And really, I don't, but that's what is happening. It's going overseas. Good question. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Me. Um, you know, honestly, any type of work experience that's related yeah. is important because just as much as you should know what you want to do, you should also know what you don't want to do because mm -hmm. there's so many different ways that you could go that maybe you don't want to be a stylist. Maybe you what you really want to do is a, be a bridal dress designer. You know, so it's, it helps you sort of focus because you don't want to go like this. You really want to define who you are. I worked in a clothing store from the time I was 15, all through high school, university. My friends were at the Michigan State Games. I was actually at the store listening to the game on the radio with no customers. <laughs> but, I mean, that's, <laughs> that's what I learned. <laughs> so I would say definitely work in the industry, really important. I would just add to that that beyond what you do for yourself professionally, this group of students that we have at Ferris and at Kendall, this 
at the, at the present is probably the most engaged group of students I've known. And they're out to try to help people, people who are less fortunate, people who have needs. And, you know, student volunteerism and is, a, is a great force in our country. So I'd encourage you to do something that makes, that helps others and makes you feel good about doing it. Because I think that that's how you become a well-rounded person. And then wherever you live, when you graduate, that's going to be a better community because you came here and went to school. And I'll give you my advice. My advice is to learn as much as you can about everything. Always be focused on what you, how you're going to apply it and the skills you're going to get. But remember that even in fashion, the people you're trying to reach are out there. And their world is the world you have to connect with. So know what that world looks like. We do that with our designers. Um, the, you know, they're trying to design things, and I'm on the road with the customers quite often, and I'm kind of a little bit of everywhere. And we get these guys. He, you were on the road a lot lately. Um, and our other design, you know, get our team out there. See what the customer wants. You can just sit here and sketch and not have any idea what they want, and it's a great learning experience. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Hear what he, said. he, I think he asked the question. Was it about unpaid internships? Is that what you asked? Yeah. Repair internships. Do you want to talk about that? Um, I'll, I'll take. Yeah. So, <laughs> yes. Um, Seventh Avenue is infamous for all the bad things that you hear about about an internship. However, we pay our interns because it really is an exchange. I mean, they're there to help us, and professionally, they should grow. Um, so they shouldn't walk out of there having picked up pins or going to run coffee. Mm -hmm. Uh, that doesn't do anything for them. And so, you know, I think the way that our we approach Our interns really it, work. I've hired quite a few of our interns. Actually, you're right. We've, they've, yeah. 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 But they're often, you, if it's a big fashion house, they can get away with it. Yeah. No. It's really a shame. It's, you, hear, yeah. you hear some really bad stories of people being taken advantage of. But for us, I mean, you know, it's more of a mentorship the way that Pamela approaches it, which I think is, makes it that much more special. Cheers. Thank you. Um, the, the question is, are they able to work with other, well, first of all, I think as was explained here, fashion is highly collaborative to begin with. Not only does it engage customers, I mean, on the level of merchandising and the retail, but even in the design elements and all the collateral things that go along with it. I mean, it's, it, it lives also in this context of rich media, you know, performance, the runway show, the lighting, the sound, uh, the spectacle of it, the web, print, I mean, just on and on. And so the point is, it's not like this idea that you, it's not like the artist in the garret who is going to be alone doing one thing. Fashion, like almost every design, is highly collaborative. And actually, I think that fashion is one of the most highly collaborative of all the professions because of how many things it entails. I mean, you were saying that um, there's not just the dress, there's the footwear, there are accessories, the jewelry, there's the car. <laughs> the chauffeur, whatever, no. But yeah, again, it's, it's just, it it's really doesn't have clear boundaries or borders. I don't know how we do it here. I think we have to make it happen. But I do see places like, like, uh, like Lee's and A.K. Rick's, for instance, where they've created communities of people who are not just doing merchandising, but are making, who are blogging, who are doing, you know, in a community. Twitter. Twitter, twitting. You have a Twitter account, right? Yeah. And, and who writes it? I work with it, but I have someone that writes it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Were there any more questions? No? Are we good? I'd, I'd like to, if I could, there's so many friends of Kendall and Ferris today, so many people who've helped us with this project, who've helped us with this building, who helped us with our college. Thank you for being here. Thank you for caring so much about our college and our students. We really appreciate the way that you've helped this college grow and prosper here right down in the middle, right, right in the middle of downtown Grand Rapids. Because that's, the, I see the mayor, that's always been our vision for Kendall. 
was that Kendall would be a part of the, of the renaissance that's happening in Grand Rapids. So thank you all, everyone who's here today for, for being here and being a part of this very, very special day for our college and our university. Okay, thank you.